Hello, I hope you're all well. Please say hello in the comments. It is good to see you all. I hope all is well. Uh, my news is that my dog bit me on the nose, which you can see there, which is quite impressive. So that was my excitement for the week. I hope yours was uh, slightly more exciting. Um, so we're gonna do system threats today and I realize I haven't updated my little thingy here. It still says utility software, so let's get rid of that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do system threats today. And that's, um, it's quite a big topic, but I think we can get through it reasonably quickly. Um, and I'll send you through the PDF so you know what's going on. But I'll uh, say hello in the comments so I can I can welcome you all, uh, and we can we can push on. So in the in the exam, you need to show that you understand what the system threats are and how you can stop them. That's basically the uh, the beginning, middle, and end of it. What are the system threats and how can you stop them? Right. Without any further ado, let's jump in and have a look. Uh, hi, Dom. How are you? Thanks for coming. Hello, Laura. How are you? Well done. Thank you for coming to uh, System Threats. Right. I'm going to go fairly quickly because I think we've been through this quite a few times, but it's worth repeating. Um, if anything that I'm saying isn't quite clear, can I make it a bit louder? Ooh, is it quiet? That's interesting. Okay. Because according to my thingy, it's very loud. So let me try that. Hang on a sec. Hang on a second. Does that make it any louder doing that? Let me try that one first. I'm pointing it more towards me. Does that make it uh, louder? Let's have a look. Laura, it's fine for me. Uh, hi, Ishak, how are you doing? It's okay for you. Because I've got a little monitor here which tells me how loud the audio is. And oh, maybe I can bring it up a little bit. But let's try that one there. How about that, Dom? Is that is that louder or am I... I don't want to, um, I don't want to get distorted, so I'm hoping that works okay. If that's still not loud enough, give me a shout. Uh, hi Ishak, hi Jelly, how are you doing? Thank you so much for coming. Um, so, is that okay Dom? Let me know. Right, network security. Big topic, nice easy topic because uh, it's just a lot of stuff that you can learn really. I suppose that's the same for anything, but it's, it's a lot of facts. So, we're going to look at um, different types of malware, and then social engineering, brute force, DDoS, um, data interception, SQL. And for each of these, we've got to, uh, that's unlike Dom to be dramatic. <gasps> so hopefully you can hear me. If it's distorting, tell me. Um, this mic is quite sensitive. Although it does seem that what it tells me I'm giving out is not quite as loud as what you're actually getting. Let's try and get my mic out of there. Cool, okay. So I'm gonna jump through these one at a time and I'll explain what they are. And then we will look at what the solutions are afterwards, right? That's the grand plan today. All right, so malware, let's push on with this. Uh, and you need to know how the, ta how the attack is used and the purpose of the attack. All right, so a basic, a basic introduction. Why is system security important? Because you, it stops networks from being compromised. It can bring a business down. It keeps data and programs secure. This sort of thing here. Ooh, my thing has gone yellow. That's exciting. I didn't know I could do that. It wasn't on purpose. Well, no, I can change that back to, I preferred pink. Oh, well, never mind. Yellow we have today, anyway. Uh, maintaining, who else have we got here? Ishak, can you turn the volume up a bit, please? Ishak, same thing, okay. I will turn it up a bit. Let's try this. Uh, how about that? Is that any better, everyone? Is that, is that, uh, let me know, Ishak, is that, is that any better or is that distorting? Uh, do let me know. Okay, so that's why system security is so important because you can keep stuff safe. Very good, outstanding. Hello, Paul Burner. Jelly, thank you for that. Hello, Paul Burner. what a handsome chap you are. Um, this is the mind map that you need. It sounds staticky, yeah, that's because I've turned it up too loud. That's why I've got to bring it down a bit. Okay, mm, there's nothing much I can do. Tell me, yeah, that staticky sound, that's when it's getting distorted, so that's what I don't want, because it'll, be, it'll sound rubbish afterwards. This, this looks to me like it's about right. So let me know, is that still staticky? You're staticky, I don't want. Uh, this mind map you can see in front of you, which I have made my classes fill out probably 8,000 times, is the one that you need to know. So I'm, I'm going to run through this and go through the... Uh, Go through the the mitigation, the ways that you can stop it from stop it from happening or limit its damage. So we've got um, 
First of all, we're looking at cyber security, okay? And this is methods and techniques to protect networks, computers and programs, right? To stop it from theft or damage, to stop your data from being, um, should I briefly put each one down? Ishak, I will send you a copy of this so you don't need to, but you might want to take some notes of the ones that you're not, um, that you're not really that, not so au fait or aware with. Aware with? Uh, aware about? Aware about? Aware of? There we go. Blimey, it's been a long day. So, this slide is really just pointing out to you what cybersecurity is. It's to keep your data secure, okay? And there are various different threats, which are what we're going to go into now. So the first, the first sort of grouping is malware, and we've got um, we've got four or five different types of malware. We're going to look at uh, viruses, worms, ransomware, adware, and so on. Okay, those those are the key types. The mitigation is the same for all of these, but I'll get to that at, at the end. So malware is software which can harm your computer. That, by the way, is taken directly from a mark scheme. So malware can harm your computer and delete or corrupt files. So we've got viruses and we've got spyware. Viruses are small programs, they're small, uh, small chunks of code which are just designed to cause damage to a computer or its files, okay, uh, to its files. And spyware, the aim of spyware is to gather information on what the user is doing. So things like, um, for example, a, a, a key logger. So it can log the keys that you press, which can be handy if you are logging, if you're able to monitor someone entering the password for their online bank account, you can then steal their, um, their data. He's always late. Um, I'd give it four minutes, he'll be here. <coughs> he's pretty, he's here like clockwork though. Um, spyware, so that's the purpose of spyware. All right, I'm gonna move fairly quickly through this. So here's the first grouping, worms. We've got worms and viruses. There's not much they can ask you about them, but key facts are, first of all, they are self-replicating. They make copies of themselves, all right? Next thing is, they don't require a host program to work. Many viruses are spread via email. Email's a host program. It's a, if you think about um, parasites that live on animals, on like ticks living on dogs, for example, the host is the dog. Um, so worms don't require a host program. They can just be in your system. And they work by sending copies of themselves uh, within your system and to other system uh, systems. And they, they clog up the system. They consume bandwidth and this may be used as part of a DDoS attack. The key point is up here, those are the two things, okay, and the fact that they self-replicate. So that is worms. Let's jump in and have a look at viruses. The similar but different. The similarity is that they replicate and they embed themselves. The difference is they do require a host program. So a virus would have to sit inside a Word document or a, uh, it could be a link inside another document. It could be a, an attachment on an email. So those are, that's the difference with a virus. And a virus is executed when the host program is executed. So you open up your email and the virus gets spread. Uh, hi, Max, how are you doing? Let's get rid of that. I, I'm, I'm good. It's quite a long day today. It's very cold coming home. Might be getting snow tonight. Um, corrupts data deletes files. You see this, this here you can use what bits do you need to put down? Okay, Ishak, so the key, the key takeaways on these are the fact it replicates and embeds, and the fact that the, um, the worm replicates and doesn't embed because it doesn't need a host program. In fact, I've really just these bullet points here, execu executed when host program executed and what it does, corrupts data and deletes files. So those are your key takeaways there, okay? All right, so we've done virus. Let's jump on to the next one. This is being a bit funny. Here we go, adware. So adware tends to be irritating rather than dangerous. Now, if you're on a, so for example, if you are trying to go onto a stream to watch uh, paid for content, like you're on a stream to watch a movie, rather than pay for it, you go onto uh, an, an illegal stream, just imagine, um, you often get pop-ups and that is adware. So it's, it's bombarding you with, with adverts because that's how they pay for their, <coughs> that's how they pay for their, for, uh, for their bandwidth. So adware works by, um, 
By looking at your browsing history, by scanning your browsing history and targeting adverts that are tailored towards you. Because this is about impressions, isn't it? They get paid for impressions like TikTok or um, YouTube. You are the product. So therefore they want to sell advertising impressions to you. And if you click on it and buy stuff, then they make some money. So the key takeaways here is that irritating rather than dangerous, it may crash or slow down your computer and it uses the browser history to target um, advertisements to you, all right? That is adware, pop-ups. Irritating, not necessarily a disaster, but very hard to get rid of. Right, this last section, which is in the uh, <coughs> which is in the spec, is a Trojan horse. Now, it's not actually a malicious threat as such. It's more. Uh, we, we are all missing decent uh, Paul Burner. Every minute that goes by is is it becomes harder and harder. Um, Trojan horse. It's a delivery method. I've been through the story of Troy. The Trojan horse was parked outside Troy by the people who were attacking Troy. Can't remember who they were. And uh, they were unable to infiltrate the city to get in because the walls were too strong. So they built a horse and left it out there. The Trojans thought, oh, we've been left a gift because they respect us so much. So they wheeled the horse inside. They all went to bed. And inside the horse, there were soldiers who came out of the horse, opened the gates, and then the army came in and killed them all. It wasn't, sorry, no happy ending and a spoiler alert there. So this is what a Trojan does. So you might, for example, download a free bit of software that allows you to, oh, I don't know, to, to change a PDF document into a Word document or to rip off the tags from, uh, from, from music, for example, okay? So in that sense, that's what this means here. It appears benevolent. It looks like it's a good thing that'll be helpful. It tends to be a standalone program that you download from the internet and when you execute the program, then it delivers its payload, it delivers its virus to you. It could be a virus, could be a worm, could be part of a DDoS attack, it could be any of those things, okay? So a Trojan horse is a delivery method rather than a threat in its own right. <coughs> Excuse me, okay, DDoS. First question over here, or first answer for you, is that DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service. <sighs> Quite a mouthful. Here's the story of what a DDoS attack is, and it is quite complex, okay? Um, a DDoS attack works when a hacker creates a piece of code. The piece of code is usually designed to bring down a website or a node, a, a, a server perhaps, which is a company's, uh, a company's web presence, right? Um, the answer is everything on these slides. You need to know all of this. So it's designed to, so the hacker will make this piece of code and then he or she will distribute it to a large number of computers via maybe a Trojan um, and might offer a free piece of software. And let's say 100,000 people download this free bit of software and they have it running on their computer. And the code that the hackers made, the malicious code, it just sits there dormant. Dormant means sleeping, not doing anything until the moment that the hacker wants to run the attack. And at that point, the hacker executes the code and the code will do one thing, which is to bombard a given website with requests. So for example, when you go to BBC and, and you click on a, on a link to read a story, you're sending the, the web server a request and the web server responds to that request by getting the images and the text and the video putting in a web page and sending it to you, right? That's how it works, because the HTML code will say, it's this text, it's that image that's saved there, it's that video, that's the title, send it off, okay? So, the idea is it'll bombard, madness with the dogs, it'll bombard a website with data packets. It will attempt to cause the system to crash. It will stop users from being able to access the website, and it can, in extremis, in extreme situations, it can render a system useless, okay? And it'll keep the system so busy that users can't cope with it. They're really regular attacks. DDoS attacks happen all the time. And we'll talk about how you can prevent those. So they haven't done a big question on DDoS for four or five years. So if I had to question pick, knowing the story of a DDoS would be useful. Renners. I don't know what you mean. Um, 
Renders. Ah, oh, renders. Makes. Yeah, renders it useless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Render. Uh, <laughs> unhelpfully, render is also a sort of paint you apply to uh, the outside of a house or fencing. But to render means to make it use useless so it can stop a system from being usable, if that makes sense. So a DDoS attack will mean that authorised users can no longer actually get into the system, okay? Um, and it used to be that, uh, well, it used to be that Xbox and PlayStation would seem to pay others to bring their to bring the other their competitors' systems down, just to make them look bad. Okay, so let's go on to the next one, which is social engineering. This is people as the weakest point. So this is tricking people in order to, to sort of get information. And there are various different flavors of social engineering. Shoulder surfing is when you stand next to someone and you watch them enter a, a password or a pin and uh, you remember it, and then you use that to gain access to a system. So that's the most simple one. <clears throat> now let's look at man in the middle attack. Man in the middle is about intercepting data. Data is sent along a network from A to B. And there's A and B, I'll helpfully hold out two fingers. But if someone is where my nose is, and is intercepting the data, they can get hold of your data. It's obviously much easier to intercept data when it's sent um, wirelessly than when it's sent through a cable, but it can be intercepted either way. But the way that it's usually done is via something called packet sniffing. And so the hacker will get hold of some packet sniffing software, which literally is, is looking at all the packets going through the ether. Um, it'll intercept them, and then they will access the communications path, they will intercept that data, and then you've lost your data. So this is known as a man in the middle attack. And uh, we'll talk about the way that you can mitigate against that. So it's packet sniffing um, as the traffic passes by, because we know that data is sent in small packets, right? Um, not big chunks, small packets. So if you intercept all those packets, you can potentially get hold of people's data. But there is a way of preventing that. Lastly, I hope, we've got to SQL. SQL is the language used to write databases, structured query language. Um, so what happens is, so say for example, you're logging into, you're logging into your bank account and you put in your username and you put in your password, but you add some extra code, some structured query language code, because SQL is a language that's used to write database queries. Um, and databases are everywhere. Spotify, Amazon, your bank account, everyone, Sims at school, but the thing we do the register on and that we send reports out on, that's all databases. Databases run the world, okay? So if you can get into a database, you can, in theory, access other people's data, which is very handy if you want to steal it, because data is a very saleable commodity, okay? Um, so you insert some malicious data after a, a malicious code after your password, you gain access to uh, the unauthorized access to the database, and hopefully you gain higher level access. So for example, when you get into your bank account, rather than just seeing your bank account details, you might see other people's bank account details, and then you could make payments to your own bank account, or better still, you would have the authorization to give million pound loans to people. And you might get to make a few of those before they find out by which point you've, uh, you've, you've taken the money out of the bank and you've disappeared to the Canaries and you're sitting on a yacht, drinking a pina colada, having a very nice time. Not that I've given that any serious thought at all, uh, as you can tell, but that is, that's what, that's what can happen. Um, a lot of money stolen from credit cards um, and SQL injection is one of those ways that you can steal from a, from a hole in the wall machine. They've kind of stopped that from happening. How does it happen? Well. Fundamentally, it's, it's because everything to do with computing is just code. It, it's a bit like the, um, the, not that I want to make you super paranoid, but a bit like the camera on your, on your screen, on your, on, your, on your monitor. It's just a piece of code to turn it on and turn it off. It's just a bit of, and you know in theory the light goes on when your camera goes on. I would say to people, the head, the head, of, the, um, the head of the CIA puts a black bit of sticky, sticky tape over his, over his uh, camera because it, if you if you knew the code, you could just you could just play with it. Okay. Um, I he has some abilities. I think that would be stretching. Um, yeah, I think I think that might not be the case. 
Okay, we've got farming. Farming is to do with changing, notice a PH, not F for farming. Farming is changing the IP address. So you know every website has an IP address, okay? And it's changing the IP address that's stored in the domain name system to another IP address. So it, in an, another, another, yeah, another way of, of looking at this is called spoofing. So it, it's spoofing one address for another. So people think they're going to a genuine address because the address has been changed in DNS, but instead it's not. I think it would be beyond him to be perfectly honest with you. Um, is farming still a part of social engineering? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is a part of social engineering. This is all social engineering. Good question. Yes, it is. You're keeping me honest, Ishak. A good question. Um, so that's a way of tricking people, okay? Um, so social engineering is this notion of uh, the idea that people are the weak point. Um, and it's often used by criminals to get people to make mistakes. So, for example, ringing up, um, you've all seen the, uh, the scams on YouTube where a scammer rings up and says, uh, I'm from the uh, fraud division of the Royal Bank of Scotland. I'm just ringing to check whether you made a payment for £250 to doodle.inc. And you go, no, no, I didn't make that payment at all. And they say, OK, well, we can we can uh, we can stop that payment. Could you just give us the uh, first and third letter of your passcode? And you give it, and they say that hasn't gone through. Can I take the second and third? They did it a few times, and they've they've got your passcode. They'll try and get as much information off you as possible, um, and they've got quite detailed scripts that they read from, where they've obviously sort of taken real conversations. That because I do I do get phone calls sometimes from my bank to say, did you pay for this? It's like yes, I did. I did pay for that. All right, we're so so we'll put we'll put it through, because payments get triggered sometimes. Um, if you pay something in another country, I, I I paid for something from off of the web. Yeah, do you know what, Laura? That that really isn't a bad plan because if you don't answer them, because sometimes the bank calls me, but but if if yeah, it is it is actually a really a really sensible thing thing to do, because if they desperately wanted to get hold of you, they'd write to you. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, I'm not sure that's the best advice though, to be fair. Um, so phishing um, is tricking people in that way. So you've got these various different flavors of uh, social engineering. We're now onto a new type of attack. This is a brute force attack. And this is when people try to guess your password. So you know when you when, when you go onto a website and you and you set a new account up and it makes you do ridiculous things like it's got to be the password's got to be ten characters long it's got to contain a number a capital letter a special character blah 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 this is to prevent brute force attacks and they work a bit like this it's a trial and error way of guessing your password. So you can buy a hacking tool that comprises of an online dictionary. An online dictionary will, will, will contain, I don't know, four million English words. And most people, a lot of people, are very lazy with their passwords. Number one, they use the same password for everything. And number two, they use dictionary words because they're much easier to remember. Uh, or they use uh, they use uh, the names of people that they uh, love, fancy, are married to, uh, etc. Or the or their own birthdays, or or, or or birthdays of their of their kids, or their mums or their dads, or whatever. Okay. So the way this works is is that they use this online dictionary to to try to force through tens of thousands of combinations of words and numbers just to see if they can get through. And it can do it really, really quickly. Thousands of combinations can be tried each second. So, so that's how this thing works, all right? It's a sort of trial and error method, but it is very effective because people get, people get their social media broken into all the time. And uh, now banks tend to make you use ridiculously complicated passwords, which you end up writing down, which kind of defeats the purpose of having passwords, really. Um, so that is, is that all I need to say about them? Yes, it is. Uh, denial of service attack, I've actually done that one. So I don't need to do the DDoS attack again. Data interception theft, we just talked about that. Specialist hardware, um, packet sniffers, SQL, this is the repeat. Okay, now before I jump onto quiz time, where am I? I'm at 54, okay. That was a lot of talking. I'm hoping you can read the stuff on this screen. 
I think if you're on a computer, you probably can. If you're on a mobile phone, it might be a struggle. I've already given most of you a copy of this, but the reason I put it up there is this is pretty much everything that I've been through. Um, except in the black boxes, you can see the mitigation. This is what you can do to, to prevent. So to answer your question, Ishak, everything on this sheet, that's the entire topic. So this could be a 12 mark sort of piece of work, this. This could be 1.2 sort of grades in your 1.3 grades. The DDoS attack, that is the one where the hacker um, infects thousands of computers with a piece of code, the code lies dormant, then the, the control bot, the hacker in charge, um, activates the code, the code's activated on all of the, um, you know, there'll be a special code word that you send to the computers. The, uh, the code is activated and the computers simply send um, requests to a website. So they might send requests uh, or incomplete requests even to Nike.com. But if you get, Nike.com can cope with having, let's say, 100,000 requests at a time. But if because of this attack, it's suddenly receiving 2 million requests for, uh, for web pages, then it'll end up knocking the server down. And once the server gets knocked down, then they can actually get in and, and, and steal data. Is it called DDoS? Yeah, DDoS, denial of service, distributed denial of service. The distributed, as in, um, yeah, 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 that's absolutely fine. The distributed bit means that, it, that it's shared like um, a distribution network shares things, okay? Um, I was gonna say drug distribution, but that's not really a very, very good example. What else, you can distribute anything. So the way, so, you know, I might distribute papers around the class sharing it, okay? So it's the fact that you're sharing the, the, the threat among tens of thousands of computers, which makes it all the harder to cope with. Right, so last thing from me are these mitigations on here. The, um, mitigations means ways of preventing or limiting and you usually can't prevent the, the attack, you can just limit it, right? So this one over here, I'm gonna highlight that in yellow, hoping you can see it. They will, they will ask you how to prevent worms, viruses, trojans, adware and ransomware, right? Install anti-malware software. Don't say antivirus software, say anti-malware, because that covers all of it, all right? And then keep the virus definitions up to date. Let me, oh, that was a bit, not what I what did I do there? That was uh, that was unex. Oh my goodness me! What am I doing? Oh, okay. That was uh, that was unexpected. Let me try and go back to. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I know. I got it. I got it. I got it. You'd think I'd talk computer science, wouldn't you? you use it at access levels. Let's try and get back. Live stream eleven. Live stream twelve. Come on, Glenn Thomas. What is wrong with you? Let's go through this and find the right place. It was down here somewhere. I pressed a button that did something miraculous. No, those are my questions. Let's go back to my lovely mind map. Come on, 11, 10. I think we're there. Yay, okay. Okay, let's try again without all the drama. Let's get back to keeping virus definitions up to date. Right, here's the virus story. Viruses get released, and then you pay a company to to give you um, to give you antivirus software. But the antivirus software comprises of virus definitions. So whether it's McAfee or Norton, they're keeping a lookout for viruses. They find a virus, and then and then they work out what the virus looks like and what you need to do to find it and delete it, okay? So they, on a daily basis, they will release new virus definitions as they come out. So your, your software, your antivirus software will need, SQL is used for databases. Yes, that is correct. Well done, thank you, Laura. I hadn't spotted this last question there. Um, so you've got to keep those virus definitions up, up to date because new viruses, new threats keep emerging every day. So that's why they have to be kept up to date. One of the mitigations that you can use is, one of the ways to prevent it, is to ban USB flash drives. So you know on the school computers, the USB flash drives don't actually work anymore. So they've, 
And the day they, they announced that to all the staff, there was almost a civil war because we all had gigantic hard drives we carried everything around on. But it's a massive virus threat, um, massive threat to the system. So instead, we now have to use uh, OneDrive instead. And it works OK, uh, to be fair. Um, so you can ban USB flash drives and you can also uh, limit access to certain websites. I've done it again. And you can ban access to certain websites. I don't know why it's doing this. This is quite extraordinary. Oh, there we go. Uh, I got back to the right place again. Ban and limit access to certain websites. So obviously the, there are websites that, that, that you, when you sign the um, acceptable use policy, which is another thing you can do um, to stop it, uh, in year seven, you said that you wouldn't click on naughty websites. You would use your email for school purposes. And every, every company you go to has those sorts of rules, okay? So that's the mitigation. That's how you can prevent or stop malware. Let's jump down to this one because it's a nice easy one on the bottom here. And this is how you prevent brute force attacks. The brute force attacks are people trying to guess your password with the online uh, dictionary where they're gonna bombard your, they're gonna try thousands of combinations of, uh, of, of password, okay? That's why they make you, and you get a mark for each of these in the exam. Passwords which are long, in other words, more than eight characters. Combination of lower and uppercase. I want to do a quiz. I know, Jelly, I'm not far away now. Combination of uppercase, lowercase, biometric access methods and smart cards, okay? I will speed up. Um, mitigation over here for, um, what's this against? This is against uh, uh, social engineering, staff training and ban access to certain websites. We've done that one. Uh, DDoS, anti-malware network forensics and monitoring software. And the way you can stop um, data interception is to encrypt data, which is turning plain text into ciphertext. Jelly, your dream will come true because I too want to do a quiz because that was too much. But I will send you through all of that stuff so you have it and I will get on with uh, the first quiz. Just bear with me a little moment here and let's get this done. Okay, so this is the quiz. Here is the first question. You even get the jingle. I haven't yet had offers from Hollywood to make jingles. Oh, blimey, you're in quick. Okay, so, 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 where are we? Laura has come in with a B. Laura was the first, if I can get hold of her. Where are you? There. Laura said B. Dom said B. Jelly said B. Rukshan. Hi, Rukshan said B. And Ishak said B. Shall we see if you are correct? The answer is B. Paul Berner said B as well. You are correct. That is outstanding. Okay, what about this one? What does SQL stand for? What does SQL stand for? No drama. Ooh. I know you miss him. Well, you should have, but yeah, he's normally so good. You may have scared him away. Um, okay, stop that. Uh, Paul B, Paul too slow. Uh, Laura said C, structured query language. Rukshan has said C, Jelly said C, Dom said C, Ishak said C. He was giving you all a chance. He's so generous. Let's see, you are all absolutely outstanding. And Max our newest computer science graduate has also said C. That is outstanding. Uh, okay, uh, and, and Hazel as well, outstanding with a C, which is good. Um, okay, viruses rely on A. Seems to be terrifying. What do viruses rely on? A small hamster. God, you're so fast. Uh, Rukshan has said A. Um, Laura has said A. <laughs> Rookshan's got a picture of uh, Marcus Rashford. He wasn't looking so happy the other night, but let's not talk about that. Max has said A, Jelly has said A, Paul has said A, and Hazel has said A, and the answer is, yay, it's A. You are outstanding. Okay, next. Um, <laughs> yes, we mustn't gloat though, nothing worse than gloating. A DDoS attack is designed to bring down... I have a bad feeling about this. What do we think? 
what do we think it's designed to burn down? Yes, we shan't, we shan't be too unkind. Ooh, uh, Laura has said B. Uh, Rukshan has ignored all the abuse and gone for B, which is very good of you. You're being a bigger man than me. Uh, we've got Max who said B. We've got, uh, there's quite a few coming through actually. We have got, uh, maybe they're not, let's have a look. Well, do you know what? You are absolutely, come here, Mr. Mouth. <laughs> It is B. That is outstanding. Okay, let's push on. Next one. What about this one? Come on, screen. Do your thing. Right. Brute force attacks involve what? Ooh. Uh, blimey, you guys are so quick. Laura C. Jelly C. Laura is much faster on, on it today than Dom. Uh, I can't keep up. Laura, uh, Jelly C, Dom C, Rukshan C, Ishak C, <laughs> uh, Hazel C, Max C, Paul C, Dom. Uh, ooh, getting spicy. So let's see, were you correct? Yay! It is outstanding. You are all saintly. Uh, in a DDoS attack, many thousands of nodes may be infected by malware prior to the main attack. True or false, what do we think? This sort of music should actually be banned. I can't bear it. So hang on, we've got, um, ooh, uh, B, B, was this, this was, this was Dom, smarting from the abuse with the B first. Jelly next. Paul B, Laura B, Max B, Hazel B, Rukshan True, Ishak True. Shall we see if you are correct? And it is true. That is outstanding. Almost there, I think one more. Question seven. A Trojan is a way of describing how the payload is delivered rather than the payload itself. Is this true or is this false? Oh, rain. I don't know why I've got rain. Hmm. Curious. Uh, let's have a look. We've got, then we've got a lot of A's here. We've got A. We've got A. We've got A. We've got A. I think, who was the first A? True. Yeah, should we have a look? The answer is true. That is outstanding. Uh, what time is it? 07. Well, we've done, we've done nearly enough time. I might have some more quizzes here. Do I have more? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You should take a bit of science. It's never too late. Do you know what? I've got some more here. Do you want to do a few more? I might have given the answers away here. So let's go back ah, to here. I think it's, 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 <laughs> let's go from here. Um, select a rule which might uh, form part of a strong password policy. What do we think of this one? Uh, it may be that more than one is correct. In case you saw me flicking through yeah, absolutely. You know, you could you could yet go and make a billion pounds from creating code. Uh, there are always new coders out there. Um, so what do we think? A. Jelly's gone for A, B. Uh, do you know what? The school makes us change our password every half term and it drives me crazy. Uh, Everyone saw answers, did they? Well, even though they saw the answers, quite a few haven't got it right. So, um, okay. The answer is A and B. That is, C is too much work. C is way too much work. It would drive people mad, wouldn't it? That, Jelly, those are wise words. Okay. What about this one? In school, user access levels are used to stop teachers from deleting software. Although we can't delete software, um, allow students, I can't even install software, it drives me crazy. Allow students to open files from shared drives, but not to edit or delete them. Do we think A or B? That one's just too easy, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, it's B, it's B. Yeah, 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 it is. Let's push on, because that's just too easy. What about this one here? Um, yes, you are correct. You are correct. You are correct, Max, and you're correct, Hazel, as are you, Paul, and Laura. Oh, I just gave that one away. Let's do another one. Right. Select the appropriate... Uh, different gravy. Very good. Uh, select the appropriate methods of preventing phishing. Uh, access rights, physical, physical security or training staff. I seem to have lost the ability to speak. Select the appropriate methods of preventing phishing. Which of these is it? I got a bad feeling about this. 
You did guess which one, which field that was from last time, didn't you? Uh, all says Dom. Well, hang on, I, I should keep an eye on this. I think Dom said A B C. Jelly said A C. Jelly said A C first, and then Dom said A B C. Rookshan said C. Paul Burner said C. Laura said C. Dom said all. Max said C. Rookshan said E. <gasps> Laura said B C. Hazel said C. And Paul said Where's Deason? I think, I think you're missing him more than me. The answer is C. Always a good answer for um, preventing any sort of, um, any kind of social, I forgot, I forgot what it's called, any, any any kind of tricking people. Social engineering, <gasps> you would come. Staff training, use that one, okay? Um, you know, I think you're absolutely right. I think you are on it. Absolutely on it. Uh, oh, okay. All three. Perhaps the what question was that. I think I've lost the ability to function. All right, guys, you have done. What was the question there? Did I jump through two? No, it just wasn't a question. Okay, cool. Um, now the dogs have gone mad, we're done. So that, guys, was about half a term's teaching in about 40 minutes. Uh, no, I don't know. I'm not sure how they do with the, with the coding, to be honest with you, but uh, your attendance has been outstanding. Um, so there we are. That's where that's where we've got to, and you—that's uh, everything that you need to know for that particular um, unit. Don't forget that I have got. I uh, they do. They miss decent terribly. They want to bite him on the nose as well. It's like they got me. Um, what was I going to say to you? I was going to say, if you look on my YouTube channel, I have made a video on how to remember the different threats. Um, was this for IT? No, there is one on, um, there's one that I've done, which is on, uh, do you remember that stupid house that I built with all of us where there were two, um, yeah. No, th I, I, I got us to make this mind palace where there were two pandas or bears or something in the bath throwing a ping pong ball to one another and it was being intercepted by somebody with a net it's a bit of a strange story and then breaking into the um the cellar with a with a crowbar do you remember all of that so there we are so use that have a look at it guys have an amazing evening um and i will see you all tomorrow goodbye max i hope you all sleep well and i will see you in the morning bye bye enjoy adios Take care, Laura.